Chromebooks often get a lot of hate, and I'll admit, I haven't touched a Chromebook since back in elementary school. But with the recent announcement of Chromebook Plus, Google is promising double the performance and more premium hardware. So I had to go and pick one up myself to see if they're worth it in 2024. And after using this $500 Chromebook Plus for a while, I can say that Chromebooks are an affordable and increasingly practical choice for everyday users, but not for everyone. So let me explain. So Chromebooks were introduced back in 2011, and they were these cheap, portable laptops that were only meant to run Google Chrome's web browser and maybe a few other Google apps. But the problem was most Chromebooks had at least one major deal breaker, whether it was a weak processor, bad display, poor battery life, or it was just too expensive. Fast forward to today, Chromebooks are now a lot more well-rounded, and I would even argue can handle most of the things a casual laptop user needs to do. That's especially true now with the Chromebook Plus certification, which guarantees a baseline level of hardware specs plus 10 years of software support. So I went out and picked up this Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5i, which is a pretty affordable and highly rated Chromebook to show you if the Plus certification actually means anything, and to show you how the performance and build quality has held up in my day-to-day -day use compared to something like a Windows laptop. Okay, so the whole point of this new certification is so you don't end up with a device that has horrible specs and not enough RAM or storage to actually do anything. You're guaranteed at least an Intel Core i3 or equivalent, eight gigabytes of RAM and at least 128 gigs of storage. That might not sound like a lot in 2024, but the guarantee is nice to have for people who don't wanna go around comparing specs on every Chromebook. And given that Chrome OS, the operating system here is a lot more efficient than Windows, those specs can actually go quite far compared to a similarly specced Windows laptop. Let me show you what that's actually like in day-to-day -day use. So normally I try to work at a cafe or something, but the weather in Toronto is horrible these days. But using this $500 Chromebook, I can actually do a surprisingly large amount of the tasks that I would need to do on a daily basis for work. Now granted, I don't have a technical job like coding or 3D animation, so most of the work that I do on a laptop doesn't require super Super high performance. I probably spend the most time working in Notion, whether I'm writing a spec for work or drafting the script for a new video. And Notion is natively a web app, so honestly, it works pretty well on this Chromebook. In fact, everything Chrome related works pretty well, including all Chrome extensions. That brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Magical. Magical is a free Chrome extension that layers productivity features onto Chrome. It uses AI to automate all of the boring work, like writing emails and messages, or updating forms and spreadsheets. I mainly use it to manage my YouTube emails with sponsors, and it saves me so much time from having to retype the same message again or go through old emails to find something to copy and paste. For example, if I'm trying to find a sponsor for my next video, let's say Apple, I can just use this template I created for outbound sponsors by typing dash outbound. Now I just fill in the variables and boom. You can also set these things called triggers for phrases that you type a lot. So instead of having to manually retype my shipping address every time, I just type semicolon address and there it is. And this really adds up to save me time over the week. There's even some next level AI features and it's like having ChatGPT built into your browser. You can type forward slash twice and it'll magically write you an email or message and it can even pre-draft replies for you in a single click. And since it's a Chrome extension, it runs perfectly on all laptops and works on pretty much every website. It only takes a few minutes to sign up and you'll probably save a few hours per week. So definitely check out the link in the description or visit getmagical.com to try it out. So yeah, if all you need to do is some web browsing and light work within web apps, a Chromebook could work for you as an affordable laptop choice. And now that most apps like Microsoft Office and even Photoshop have browser-based versions, this Chromebook can do almost everything a regular laptop can do, just using web apps instead of regular Windows apps. Now I say you can do all of these things, but that doesn't mean the experience will be the same. It's definitely slower and jankier to work in the browser version of these apps versus the real thing. I'd say most of my problems came from the hardware limitations of this Chromebook though, which we'll talk about when we look at the build quality. One thing I have to give this Chromebook though is being able to handle dozens of tabs in Chrome without any throttling or overheating. I honestly don't even think my $3,000 Surface Laptop Studio can do that at this point, but it really Really shows how efficient Chrome OS is. Outside of being able to run web apps, Chrome OS can also download Android apps. But when I tried it with Discord, I found it pretty slow and unresponsive, so I'd opt for the browser version of apps where possible. I won't talk much about gaming because I don't think any serious gamer is considering getting a Chromebook, but light Android games will run on this, and I wouldn't bet on something like COD Mobile being very playable with these specs. I know Google's really pushing for cloud gaming with some gaming specific Chromebooks, but this one ain't it, so let me know if you want me to properly test out cloud gaming in another video. But overall at just $500, this laptop is probably good enough for 70% of what I need to do on a laptop, 
Mine is video editing and gaming. Build quality aside, I can see this being a really great affordable option for someone who's a light laptop user or someone who has another PC at home and just wants a portable laptop for some on the go work. Okay, so I said build quality aside because Chromebooks have this rep for being really cheap feeling laptop. But after using this Lenovo Flex 5i, it's actually not bad for its price. In fact, most of the Chromebook Plus devices I saw around the $500 range had very improved builds compared to the cheap laptops that we saw a few years ago. This one has a two-toned aluminum lid with the bottom being all plastic. You have a decent selection of ports with a mix of USB-C and USB-A and an SD card reader. And this being a flex device, it also transforms like this. But let's first talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. These are probably two of the most important parts of a laptop to me, so I might be a bit critical here. So the typing feeling itself is actually not bad. The keys feel like regular membrane laptop keys, but they are decently responsive and you get this elevated typing angle from the hinge. But there's a few things about this keyboard that I personally don't like. Firstly, they split the enter and shift key to try and accommodate for more keys, but these are two of the most pressed keys for me when typing, so I end up misclicking the other half of the key most of the time. Chromebooks also have this launcher key where the caps lock usually is, that's like a short cut for the spotlight search function on Macs. So if you want to use the caps lock, you'll have to press Alt plus launcher, which again, I don't really understand. And lastly, the keyboard just looks really messy. Like I normally really like Lenovo keyboards, but all of the keys here are in lowercase and then there's a bunch of extra symbols for some reason. Overall though, it's a pretty average typing experience if you don't notice these small things and it's also backlit, which is nice. The trackpad underneath though is my bigger issue and it honestly ruins a lot of the rest of the laptop experience for me. If you use the glass trackpads on a MacBook, Surface device, or any higher end laptop before, you're not gonna like the cheaper Chromebook ones. They're overall just not good to use. They don't always detect my cursor movements. It's hard to click down on sometimes and I would just definitely need a mouse bar to use this laptop for work. At least the size is pretty decent and you also have a touch screen here too. So not the end of the world. Speaking of the screen, the entertainment experience on this Chromebook and other entry level ones definitely isn't the best. Although all Chromebook Plus devices are required to have a 1080p or higher display, the entry level ones are usually not that bright, the viewing angles are pretty bad, and the colors are quite dull. The speakers here are also pretty bad, they kind of sound like that toilet paper hack where you put your iPhone into the toilet paper roll. That said, this is probably not meant to be an entertainment device, and the screen is good enough for productivity tasks and the occasional video for a $500 laptop. If things like the screen and speaker are important to you, I would definitely look into some higher end, more premium Chromebooks. Okay, so should you get a Chromebook over a Windows laptop in 2024? The answer, as always, is it depends. You've heard some of my pros and cons for Chromebooks. And honestly, with the updates to Chrome OS and more apps offering browser versions, Chromebooks are probably more viable than ever in 2024. I also didn't cover this much, but all Chromebook Plus devices also have a 1080p webcam with some pretty cool built-in AI features and a battery that should last you at least eight to 10 hours. All of that makes Chromebook sound like a pretty good value proposition for a laptop around the $500 price range. If you don't need any Windows or Mac specific applications or just want a portable and light device for you to do some work on the go, a Chromebook might just be the perfect option. The only thing that would make me think twice is if I wanted a more premium Chromebook and I would have to compare the price of that to something like an entry level MacBook Air. Anyways, hopefully this video helps you make a decision on Chromebooks or at least taught you something new. Let me know what you guys think about Chromebooks versus Windows versus MacBooks in 2024 and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or feedback. I've honestly been so busy with work, but I also have a bunch of tech content lined up. So make sure you drop a like and you're subscribed so you don't miss out on all those future uploads coming soon. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.